Well, I can see now that it is seven o'clock, but I want to encourage everybody, if you want to open up your chats, um, even while we stay on mute, just uh, feel free to I mean, everybody what, a shout what are the, what are the, that, the... And um, I think we'll, uh, we want to start on time. So we're going to get started with some music as people continue to filter in. So feel free, even though you're on mute, feel free to uh, sing along at home. Uh, we'll sing another welcoming song to bring us into the Shabbat spirit. Um, if you'll turn in your Siddur to page four, we sing together Ma Tovu, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, um, your dwelling places, Yisrael. So feel free to join me at home, Ma Tovu. take this moment to officially welcome you all here to our virtual sanctuary space. Thank you for being here. Shabbat Shalom. It's good to see you all. Um, you may have noticed uh, Rabbi Rick isn't with us tonight. We wish him well on his um, vacation and uh, honeymoon, uh, not honeymoon, um, on his celebration for his anniversary. 
Um, and I'm happy to be to be here with you all tonight. Uh, many of you are aware it's a very special weekend for me. Um, as I had my recital last night and I'm preparing for ordination this Monday. And I hope um, anyone who uh, wants to join and uh, witness the moment of the ceremony, uh, feel free to um, you know make sure you register in advance. But uh, I would love to um, to have you there if you want to join and be able to witness that moment. Um, and uh, just thank you for being here, uh, all of you tonight. It's great great to see you all and be here with you all. Um, we're going to continue our service with Shalom Aleichem, which is. Um, as many of you know, it's a it's a uh, it's a song that we use to welcome in Shabbat and specifically to 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 welcome in the messengers and the angels of peace. It's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful image to keep in your in your mind's eye of um, you know Shabbat's visiting and bringing the angels with her and uh, or giving greetings to those angels and asking them for their blessings during Shabbos. So. Um, uh, if you'll join me, this is a melody some of you have heard before for uh, Shalom Aleichem. If you're not familiar with it, I'm sure you'll catch on and feel free to join with. Shalom Aleichem Malachi Hashare into Shabbat would not be complete without taking the opportunity to light and bless the Shabbat candles. And so for that honor, I'd like to call upon the Mertzel uh, family. We've got uh, Emil and, and Becca and Sophia hopefully there. If we can spotlight them. Uh, it's just me tonight, actually. Just you, Emil. Okay. Yeah, well, so we're, we're so, happy, make it. so happy to have you here. And oh, uh, happy to be here. Shabbat shalom. Do you, you want to do one of the readings first, too? I would be happy to. Jason, you want to put that, um, give him the options? <laughs> What's behind door number two? <laughs> we'll put it up on the screen so you can read it. Sure. I, I, I will go with door number two. Door number two, great. Yeah, so in the beginning, there was darkness, and the Spirit of God hovered over the darkness. Then God created light, and the work of creation was begun. As we kindle the Sabbath lights, we remember the majesty of creation and rejoice in our ability to witness it again. Thank you, Emil. So uh, we'll take this opportunity for you to light the candles and then I yeah. will share the blessing. Baruch. 
Ruchata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Le'hadlik Ner, Le'hadlik Ner Shel Shabbat Thank you for joining us with that, Emil. Beautiful candles. Thank you. Happy to be here. So um, this is the moment we want to take the opportunity to share with you some blessings, uh, the family blessing in particular, that we uh, take this opportunity to um, recognize the beautiful blessing that's family in our lives, whether they're in your home now with you or spread across. Um, and we are thinking of them in these special moments. So please join me um, with the family blessing on page nine. So before we head into uh, one of the main parts of our service, uh, I want to take this opportunity for us to um, have the blessing that we like to say at evening times, um, otherwise known as Ma'ari Varavim. Uh, we bless God for um, creating the evenings. Um, we bless in the morning uh, for, the, for the light and uh, so too for the evening, for bringing on the evening, the darkness. Um, light and dark both together. And there's something beautiful when you see a sunset and then the stars start to come out. Um, so this song, many of you, I believe will know this song. This is Roll Into Dark. Um, so we have the English and the Hebrew of the prayer together, if you'll join me. Roll into dark. Day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into light. Night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into light. Night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into Dark, 
comes day, day turns to night. So now that we've taken this opportunity to thank God for the evening sky and hopefully take a moment to appreciate it. I don't know if anyone noticed um, in the last few nights, the moon especially has been very beautiful. If you get clear enough visibility, we even had an eclipse the other night. Um, so certainly the night sky is something to marvel at and um, Shabbat is a wonderful time as we rest to uh, contemplate um, the night sky. We're gonna move on now with the Shema, the uh, watchword of our people. If you'll join me, uh, we are on page 14. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed And for the honor of chanting the Vea Hafta for us tonight, I'd like to call upon Susie Lankowski. We can give her the spotlight. Thank you for being here with us tonight, Susie. Uh, do, yeah, do make sure you're unmuted and um, there we go. Okay. Uh, do you have the text in front of you? Yeah. Okay, well, whenever you're ready, we'll join you from home. They love to Hey, I Vidi <laughs> Thank you, Susie. That was beautiful chanting. So now we come to the part of our service where we um, mention the redemption. So we have um, the theme of redemption and we, we chant it every day. Um, it's a very popular theme for us to think about. Uh, we were redeemed from slavery in Egypt. And um, this is the song that our people sang in that beautiful moment when crossing the Sea of Reeds and um, see, witnessing the many miracles um, that brought us out of slavery. Um, so please join me, Micha Mocha, which you'll find on page 16 of your seat door. <laughs> Same thing. 
This is uh, this is meant to be a discussion, so feel free to use the chat and uh, maybe even unmute uh, at the right time. I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about this week's portion in the Torah. It's Beha Alotecha, and I think there are a few really interesting things that come up during this portion that I'd love to talk to you about. So, uh, number one is actually the Leviim, the Le the Levites, Levites are initiated into service in the sanctuary and i thought it's just so fitting and so beautiful that that happens to be our portion for this week because as you know i am about to be initiated um and ordained officially as a cantor and i'm not sure um how familiar you all are with the position of the of the Leviim. Um, but i would say there are many parallels today in terms of what cantors do and what the uh, Leviim did back in those days um, in serving in the temple and in the sanctuary. And we know that there were Levitical choirs. They had special musical training. Uh, in many ways, actually, uh, cantorial school really mirrors that experience because um, it's just fitting in so many ways. It's, uh, it's mentioned that they had to go through five years of training um, to be initiated into service. And I've, and it's typical to go through five years of school. I've just been through five years of school and they usually would start at age 25. I started at age 25 and here I am five years later. And um, it's just a really beautiful <laughs> sense of parallelism and that this happens to be the portion for this weekend leading right into that. Um, I just found it really incredible. Um, maybe not so much of a coincidence in many ways. Um, but it really got me thinking about the concept of service and the concept also of initiation and taking those meaningful moments in our lives, um, well, making meanings, me, meaning out of our lives, out of the moments of transition that we experience, which all of us do. So I wanted to ask some dialogue questions. And like I said, if you want to unmute, feel free to do that and answer the questions. Or if you'd prefer to do that in the chat, that's equally um, encouraged. So my question to you all, is to, what, that I want you to think about, and you don't have to answer if you don't feel like it. I want you to think about when was a time in your life that you were initiated into service? And this could be of any kind. It could be for your careers. It could be for family life. It could be when you feel like you were called up to a certain task, when you were initiated into that change, that transition. So when was a time that you were initiated into service? What did that look like? And how did you feel? I would love to hear, take a moment to think about it. I would love to hear from some of you and just what some of those moments look like. We all have very different lives, but we we have these moments in our lives too. And just like the, uh, just like the Livy Eam. Okay, so Jill says in the chat, tenure at work. Sure, that seems like it's definitely parallel to that. 
Anybody else want to add a moment in your life that you were initiated into service, whatever that looked like? I would say motherhood. Absolutely. Was that Maggie? I couldn't see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> and that job's never done either. <laughs> I was going to say motherhood also, but then I was thinking the other big momentous occasion that I think I transitioned was um, I was already a nurse. It was more for my career, but I, um, I had the opportunity to decide if I wanted to leave a secure position and or, or do something very um, risky and creative and start a nonprofit organization for children with special needs. And um, I decided to take the risk and it's now 25 years later. Wow. But that was, a ma that was a major decision and That's transition nice. and embarking on something totally new. Absolutely. That's a beautiful example. Thank you, Mimi. We've got in the chat, um, Elizabeth mentioned getting a mentee. Definitely. That seems like a really great call to service. And from Kim and Steve, we have uh, a calling from God. And, you know, some of us have moments like that too. I certainly have. Uh, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Would anyone else like to share? Well, then we'll move on. And um, one of the other uh, interesting themes that comes up in the Ha'alotecha is, um, Pesach Sheni. Has anybody ever heard, raise your hand, or if you want to put in the chat, have you heard of Pesach Sheni before? Who's, who's familiar with that term? Does anybody No. Okay. Can anyone tell us what, what is Pesach Sheni? Who knows? Feel free to put that in the chat, or if you want to unmute. What is Pesach Sheni? Or you can celebrate Pesach if you weren't able to when it was supposed to be happening. Absolutely, Maggie. Ding, ding, ding. Yes. So, um, in point of fact, uh, the the reason given uh, why they institute Pesach Sheni, not just in case you couldn't. So the um, the reason given is uh, some people, you know, the Torah talks about moments of ritual impurity and people had to be separated. Right. Um, and I think there's a lot of parallelism with that, too, with you know quarantining, because there was instances of those of, of those situations, too, in the times of the Torah. Um, but, yeah, if people were kept separate, they didn't have the opportunity, or if they were, you know, ritually impure, they were not able to bring sacrifices, um, the, the Paschal offering, the, the Pesach offering, and so they felt left out of that moment. Um, so it's really interesting that we uh, have an example here where people were left out um, of uh, offering a sacrifice, of, of something that can bring meaning to them. Um, feeling like they were left out of that and then having an opportunity for a do-over. And I feel like there's a lot, uh, a lot of that that we can bring into our lives as well, especially with the past year with pandemic. So I wanted to ask the question, um, can we think of any rituals which have taken place over the past year that we might want to do over, that we weren't able to do quite the way we wanted to, that we might want to do over? And feel free to put that in the chat or to unmute if you want to talk about it. Well, go ahead, Renee. Okay, so I, um, you know, speaking about Pesach, I guess Pesach Harishon that we normally um, celebrate, um, it would have been nice for my small extended family here where we traditionally get together and we didn't. We um, connected through Zoom, which even though that's a nice, safe option, mm -hmm. it's obviously not the same as in person. Mm -hmm. So it would have been nice to, it would be nice to have a Seder with my small family together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet that there are people who have never observed Pesach Sheni before who, because we don't really observe the same laws about ritual impurity today as we did back then, but certainly for that very reason, I, I wonder that there are probably people who might try doing Pesach Sheni now that more people are vaccinated and they feel safer to gather together again. So it's a beautiful example. Pat Smith uh, wrote Yom Kippur, 
Certainly, this past high holiday has looked very different in terms of the ways we engaged with our rituals. So that's a yeah. great example. Does anybody else want to give an example of? And it can be Jewish rituals, but it could also be other rituals in your life that you know look different over the past year. You might want to do over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another. It's Renee again. <laughs> but I was going to say another thing that's very nice. You know, Sukkot, where we're supposed to gather together and invite people into our Sukkot if we make a Sukkah. And with COVID, obviously, that was not really feasible. So I had many holidays, obviously. Yes, that's a great example, too. Yes. I in fact, my mother was actually just speaking to me earlier today, and she thought it was so um, interesting the way I adjusted for Sukkot. If anybody, if, if anyone recalls back then, I actually had a, uh, uh, I made an indoor sukkah because that was the best that I could do. So I had a little <laughs> sukkah in, uh, set up in my closet, if anybody remembers that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, certainly that's not how Sukkot is supposed to go. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we engage with these rituals differently. Does anybody else want to share an example? Yes. Um, Go ahead. Uh, in in our family, uh, we all divided up the different parts of the Seder service. Uh -huh. And so we all participated, uh, taking our favorite part and how it fit with the, the times. And I think we're going to probably keep that because it was so interesting how different people approached the uh, each one uh, from the bread of affliction on. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a great example. Yeah, rituals do change sometimes over time too. And sometimes new things we do become traditions down the line. I, yeah. I'm certainly willing to bet that there are people who um, may continue to use Zoom to engage with their family you know, on the other coast or wherever they are during um, these times mm -hmm. of the year and especially yeah. Passover and other things like right. that. Right. Yes. Did anybody else want to share? Yeah, I would think that many of the um, youth in our congregation and probably throughout the world who did not get the opportunity to um, celebrate their, you know, bar or bat mitzvah oh, in the yes. sanctuary and had to do it through Zoom. They would love a do-over. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a really great example. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, definitely true. Yeah. And I celebrated uh, Pesach Sheni about uh, seven or eight years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so suddenly I found myself in Alaska on business wow. yeah. and uh, you know you just can't walk into Walmart and pick up pick up matzah you know or Vaughn or in college. Yeah, anywhere there, else yep I was in uh, Appleton Wisconsin there was not a lot of um, kosher for Passover food to be found in that town I get I get that yeah probably even more so in Alaska yeah I totally if, understand if, that if you if you want ma if you want matzah in Anchorage, you uh, wander over to the synagogue and you uh, order your matzah. I think it's three months in advance. Wow. And, well, you can uh, always make they, it yourself, too. <laughs> it, well, not in a hotel. Oh, that's tricky. Yes, not, not so much. Not in a hotel. And, that's very and they are uh, And they order a pallet of uh, Pesadic food, you know, a pallet or two for the congregation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was there in, I was there again in... Uh, 2015, same same task, but I had but I was able to plan, and the uh, project manager gave us each a shipping case, to uh, you know to pack with whatever we felt we needed, and five pounds of matzo went into the case. Oh goodness! And I uh, and I made a reservation for the uh, community seder at the synagogue up in um, uh, congregation or uh, Hatzafon. Wow. And uh, made a reservation there for the community Seder. So I did a Seder and I ate matzah and it was good. Yeah. All right. So um, I wanted to introduce the third theme that kind of comes up in the Halotacha. And this is a strikes me as a very Jewish thing. Um, kvetching. <laughs> um, because um, it's brought up in this uh, in this part of the Torah that um, even though we know um, that the Israelites, while they were wandering in the desert, they had the man, they had the, the manna provided for all their needs in the desert. Um, so even though all their needs in the desert were provided for, they still complained. And this is what they said. They said, at least 
when we were slaves in Egypt, we had meat. So they get, they're getting tired of the same old, same old, uh, even though they have everything that they need. And this is one of the situations in which I feel like, um, first of all, I mean, I suppose it's relatable because who here doesn't like to come? I mean, it's not like it solves anything, but sometimes we unburden our complaints and sometimes we feel a little bit better. It's a bit of a catharsis, but um, yeah, even though they had everything they needed, um, but the, the, the tricky thing about it is that they were idealizing the time that they spent in slavery. That's the, that's the hard part about this, right? Because it's not just complaining, it's complaining, we had, it be we had it better back when we were slaves in Egypt. And that's just not a mindset that we want to encourage, especially since, um, since these were the people, the very people who were present for some of the biggest miracles that have probably ever occurred um, in human history, right? Um, the, the 10 plagues, the crossing of the sea, the revelation at Sinai. I mean, all these people were present for that. And um, they still weren't satisfied with um, what they had. And so this is one of the reasons among a few, I think the sin of the golden calf was a big one. The, um, and of course, there was also the, uh, the story of the 10 spies. Um, and, but I think this is also another reason why, um, <laughs> why the, uh, these people, you know, weren't, weren't the ones who ended up meriting the opportunity to go into the land. Uh, so, so basically, um, it, it kind of demonstrates to us the importance of your mindset and your attitude. So I want to take a moment, um, for you to picture just, if you want to close your eyes, feel free to do that, but picture a time in your life when you were in a, what I'll call a narrow place. Mitzrayim in Egypt is called, is literally translated as a narrow place. So I think many of us, have, we've all experienced a narrow place in our lives. So think of that time. Think of the time when you were in a narrow place. And then I want you to take a deep breath and let that go. And look at where you are now and Recognize your freedom from that narrow place and just reset your mindset because um, sometimes it can be damaging to stay in that narrow place mindset. Sometimes we don't get to see the, you know, those blinders. We don't get to see the opportunity that's to the side. We can't see it yet and we can get stuck in those mindsets. I think that's a lesson that we take from this portion. And then one other thing that we take from this portion is the story of Miriam. I don't know if anybody may know about this story. So um, the story goes that Miriam and Aaron, by the way, um, that they may have been gossiping a little bit about Moses and about his wife, Zipporah. Um, so that moment uh, where they were gossiping and that that's an instance to us of Lashon Hara. Is everybody familiar with the concept of Lashon Hara? Okay, I'm seeing some hands. So Lashon Hara is literally the evil tongue, so otherwise known as gossip. And we have the concept in Judaism where that is a very damaging thing. Um, in fact, it's, you know, we have instances in the Torah um, and probably elsewhere in the Tanakh as well, that um, speaking Lashon Hara, speaking slander or gossip, um, speaking evil words, you know, doing something like that is harmful to you, not just to the other person. We know it's harmful to the words, to, you know, har words can hurt. We know it can be harmful to other people, but it's hurtful to ourselves. Um, in fact, um, the way the story goes is Miriam was then inflicted with um, Sarat. She was inflicted with a skin disease. And even though Moses was the one, Moses and Zipporah, they were the ones who were maybe the subject of this gossip. Um, but he still, um, I, he forgives her. He, he's the one who prays. He prays for her healing. He says, Anna el la. God, please heal her. Um, Anna el la. So that there's three times that he, that he says, please. And this is an instance where we see the power of prayer because uh, then her disease is lifted and, and everyone is praying together too. It mentions that the whole gathered, um, Israelites, that they were all praying for her, um, for her healing. So we see the power of prayer and the power of communal prayer for healing, um, which I think is something that we've inherited all the way through today. So um, we'll have our Misha Berach prayer later tonight. Um, 
but it's going to be especially powerful, I think, now as we come into Baha Lotacha for this weekend for our weekly portion, because this is the time, this is the time where we pray for healing. So with that in mind, um, I'd love to turn now to uh, an evening prayer um, that mentions a little bit about healing and just a little bit about safety at the in the nighttime. Um, so many of you have heard this one before. Um, this is an original. Uh, it's Shelter of Rosalena. Um, asking God to spread over us the shelter of God's peace. Um, so uh, we'll put the words on the screen for you and feel free to join me. We need your strength tonight As we do every night Shelter us Please grant us peace of mind All worries far behind Shelter us O Frosaleinu Sukkot Shlomecha Shelter us with your want to give you all the opportunity now to enter into a moment of silent prayer and contemplation. So please take a few moments to yourself for this meditation. Hopefully by now you've all had a moment to conclude your 
personal reflections. And if not, uh, I want to encourage you to continue doing so. Um, you can join us on page 22 with the Hila song to conclude our personal meditations. <laughs> This is the moment we want to take to offer our communal prayers for peace, for healing, um, to those in our community who um, may have need of it and everywhere in the world. So we're going to take a moment here. Um, if you want to also add names in the chat that may not be on the list, feel free to do that. Please join with me, me with Misha Beda. <laughs> filtering in the names um, of people that we want to wish healing to. We're going to also pull up the list and we want to wish Misha Berach to all of these members. Uh, we want to wish Misha Berach a full healing to all of the family members, those we know, and all of those in our community and all of those who have made it, made their way onto this list, people that we know and love, people who are with us, even if we haven't met them, people who are part of this community, and um, we want to wish them uh, a full healing in every way that's possible with our prayer together. We're found back in the second verse. <laughs> Bless those in need of healing with refuah shleva, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. May they have. 
have a complete healing in every way that's possible, body, spirit, soul, mind, emotion. Amen. And of course, we need to take this opportunity as we do every Shabbos to reflect on those who are no longer with us. Um, may their memories be for a blessing. So um, we're going to continue now with the Kaddish, the Mourner's Kaddish, Kaddish Yatom. And um, we'll read the names for those who we want to um, recognize and sanctify, um, sanctify God's name in their honor and their memory. So this Shabbat, we say Kaddish for Sandra Gaiman, Charlotte Hellman, Diana Barnwell, the Israeli and Palestinian victims of the recent conflict, Ray Turchin, Sylvia Miller, for Karen Ness, for Fred Michaels, Linda Luna, Dr. C. Harold Cohn, Barbara Abraham, Ernestine Erkin, Earl Sanders, Larry Moskowitz, Rebecca Kaufman, Howard Schwartz, Richard Abraham, David Bernstein, and we say the Kaj prayer for the yard sites of Gary Smith, Phyllis Ruth Cheen, Louise Lorden, Suzanne Goldsmith, Norman Kaplan, Francine Lester, Kenneth Namiro, Yetta Rosh, Dorothy Sabbath, Elsie Singh, Anita Schreidman, for George Floyd, Milton D. Frank, Genevieve Gorlick, Julius Levy, Morris Sampson, for Charles Sagal, and for all those we have lost to COVID-19 this past year. Please join me now on page 24 for our Kaddish prayer. And I want to invite you, if you feel so inclined, to rise um, to say the Kaddish in their memory as we sanctify God's name. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba ve'alma divrach yirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chaye chon v'yomei chon v'chaye d'chol b'yit Yisrael Ba'agala uvizman kariv ve'imru, amen. Gehe shmei rabba mevarach le'alam ul'almei almaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit farman v'yit nose. V'yit hadar v'yit ala v'yit hala shmei d'kudsha v'richu. Le'ela min kol b'yachata v'shirata. Tush v'chata v'nechemata. Ta'amiran be'alma v'imru, amen. Gehe shlama rabba min shamaya. Chaim alenu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mromav hu ya'ase shalom alenu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol yoshvei tevel v'imru amen. We thank God that they were with us for the time that we had, and feel free to now be seated. Uh, we're going to conclude that. Um, Kaddish prayer with Ose Shalom, a prayer for peace, if you'll join me. Ose Shalom, Shalom, be Ramav, Uya Ose Shalom, Ale. Shalom, Amen. 
take this opportunity now to call upon our immediate past president, Maggie Freed, to give us the announcements. Thank you, Maggie, for joining. Sure. Thank you so much, Cantor, for a lovely service and interesting things to think about with today's uh, this week's Torah portion. We'd like to thank tonight's service participants, uh, Emil Mertzel for lighting the candles, Susie Linkowski for a lovely uh, Vea Hafta. And tonight's virtual Oneg is sponsored by David and Donna Rosenbaum in, order, in honor of the ordination of their daughter, Cantor Alyssa. And coming up at Temple Sinai this week, there's always a lot going on. Cantor Alyssa's ordination ceremony is on Monday at 11, and it requires pre-registration, so check that out. Uh, Sisterhood's bookends on Tuesday at 7, discussing Growing Up Below Sea Level by Rachel Biale. And Sisterhood's Stitch and Schmooze with Marilyn Silva, meeting on Thursday at 4. That's for knitting and crocheting and stuff, I think. And please save the date for the annual congregational meeting, which is on June 6th, a week from Sunday at 10 o'clock. It's very important that everybody comes because we have to do the business of the congregation and we can't do it unless we have a quorum. You'll find the Zoom links and details about all of these and more in Sunday's TSG email blast. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom and thank you, Maggie. Sure. I also do want to say um, if anyone uh, didn't catch last night's recital and you feel like you're missing out on something, uh, it's still available to watch. We, we streamed it. You can find it on our Temple Sinai of Glendale page. It's been shared, multiple people have shared it. You can find it very easily or you can go straight to the Vimeo page if you feel like checking that out. Um, and it's, it's meant so much to me to be able to share this weekend and this moment with you all, with my community. Uh, so I want to thank you all. It's been such a blessing. Um, if you'll grab your Kiddush cup and join me, we'll do a short Kiddush. Baruch HaTadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen. L'chaim. And by the way, your rendition of the Kiddush was fabulous. <laughs> well, it was, it was, it was not all me. It was, it was, uh, it, um, the great Sophie Kurtzer wrote that Kiddush. So it was a pleasure to share it with you all. It was beautiful. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll share it here for a Friday night. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so our closing song for tonight is Adon Olam. And many of you know, this is my favorite tune to use for Adon Olam. Um, made famous by the, uh, by the, um, by our, uh, not, not literal, but figurative cantors, Simon and Garfunkel, um, to the tune of, um, the Scarborough Fair Canticle, if you'll join me with Adon Olam on page 26. <laughs> Zion and Lachimbo. 
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. If you all want to unmute, wish each other a good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom, good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat shalom. shalom. everyone. Shabbat Shalom. And a happy weekend to everybody. Long weekend. Stay for the Absolutely. It's a beautiful weekend for us to all enjoy.